the day before the prelim. I don't know what this video is going to be like, guys. I think this is just going to be a prelim final ramble, to be honest. It's been such a weird week. <laughs> oh, the D's are in a prelim taking on the Cats tomorrow night. I would be lying if I said I haven't been obsessively thinking about this. It's been a little bit crazy, to be honest. I, I can't get it out of my head. I keep thinking about if the game goes positively for us, and I keep obviously thinking about if the game goes negatively for us. I've been doing the maths in my head trying to predict the game and I end up leaning towards a positive sort of outlook. We played Geelong twice this year. We've beaten them twice this year. I feel like our best footy and our footy in general over the season has been more consistent. I'm really, really glad we got to experience the full wrath of the Cats in round 23. To be 44 points down... I, I normally would take as a negative, but to be 44 points down, I feel like we've experienced how they can rip teams apart and rip games apart. And I'm so glad we got to experience that in the final round rather than experience that this week. Not to say that they probably couldn't do it to us this week either. <laughs> so in my head, I'm going, well, we've experienced their best. We've beaten their best. We've beaten them a couple of times this year. Our form's better. We've been more consistent. Why aren't I more positive going into this clash? And the reason I'm not is probably because I haven't seen Melbourne get over this hump yet. I haven't seen us break through a prelim before. I've never experienced it. I sort of remember the 2000 grand final. I remember the day a little bit. Mum was making a red and blue sponge cake for me. You know, triple tier cake. Um, each layer was red and blue and all sorts of colours. It was unbelievable. I remember that. I remember me and dad putting Melbourne flags out on the veranda. <laughs> and that's all I remember. So I've never seen my team break through a prelim before. And I've never been confident enough to tip my team against the Cats. Even when I thought we've been better in seasons gone by, like in the 2018 elimination final, I don't think I was confidently tipping us to win that game, even though, you know, the form and whatnot suggested we probably could. We're going into this game having beaten the Cats twice before in better form and I can't confidently tip us. There's something about that Geelong footy club really makes me nervous and it's probably the years of absolute floggings and it's probably the years of me going to GMHBA being a little bit glass half full and getting the absolute positivity ripped out of my heart. <laughs> I think Geelong's top five to top eight players are as good as the top five to top eight players in the comp. I think they are... They're so dangerous. They're, they're probably the most lethal uh, top five to top eight players in the comp. But I feel like our, our system and our depth is really, really encouraging. And that's why in my head I sort of go, if it doesn't happen now, it's okay. Like the future is looking exciting. But I know that there's no guarantees in football. Uh, you, you're not guaranteed anything in football. And I learned that the hard way in 2018. We got through to the prelim. We beat Geelong, beat Hawthorne, got through to the prelim, got smashed by West Coast. And I had the same mindset that I have now. Oh, that's all right. We'll be, we'll be good for it next year. And then the following year in 2019, we finished second last. <laughs> so as much as like a part of me goes, it's okay if it doesn't happen tomorrow night. It's okay. It's all right. We'll be back soon. Uh, the other part of me goes, well, there's no guarantees in football and you've got to make the most of your opportunities. And this is just... The best opportunity my football club has had at it in 57 years. That is a long time, man. <laughs> that is, that's the longest. It's the longest time. <sighs> so in my head, I go, it's okay if it doesn't happen. But then also in my head, I go, nah, it's now or never. If not now, when? Honestly, it is now or never. It, it <laughs> If we're... If we're talking grasping the opportunity, it's got to be now. It really has to be now. And I just hope and pray that they can get it done. I've lost sleep. I've lost sleep all week about this. I have been obsessively thinking about it. My last three nights have been really interrupted sleeps and I've been dreaming about it. And every time I've dreamt over the last three nights, the cats have won. And it's just been tossing and turning. And I, I genuinely, I, I know I sound like a bit of a loser nuffy. And I, I wish <laughs> I wish I wasn't like this. But uh, yeah, I had I had a dream last night that the Cats won. And the following week, I was watching them play Essendon. <laughs> <laughs> 
don't know how the Bombers have weaseled their way into that one. But, um, yeah, I was watching the Cats and the Bombers in the granny the following week. It's just been all-consuming. Um, but, yeah, if not now, when? And I've been thinking this week, and this is, this is another stupid thought. I, I told you this would be a bit of a ramble. But I've also been thinking this week, like, I don't know how teams do this. Like, <laughs> like I don't know how... Geelong supporters can go through this every year. This is torture. This has been a torturous week. <laughs> it's been exciting. It has been so exciting. It's, it's you know, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and the week that I've gone through has only happened a handful of times for the Melbourne supporters in 60 years. So I'm trying to soak it up and embrace it. But it's been tough. It's been stressful. And I just think of, like, those dynasty teams who are just prelims for fun every year like a Geelong or a Tigers or a, um, a Hawthorne, a Sydney, a West Coast, those teams that are always up there. I don't know if you ever get used to it. I wonder potentially if you rip off the Band-Aid and get the scalp of that first flag. Like if, if we got that breakthrough flag this year, I feel like next year's prelim weekend I'd be a little bit more relaxed. But... Oh man, I just it's been it's been almost unbearable <laughs> at times. But on the other hand, it's been the best week of my life. It's been so exciting. The buzz on social media and whatnot. It's just been it's been the best. Uh tomorrow night I will be streaming. <laughs> I can't believe it. I will be streaming. Um if the D's touch wood, fingers crossed, um happen to win and happen to get through to the grand final. I won't be streaming that. I'll be watching that with dad. And I hope they do because I've sort of, I haven't watched any of the finals with dad. I was thinking I would stream the qualifying final and then the prelim, I would watch it with dad out in the lounge room. But I also feel like I've been on the journey uh, for the last three or four years with everyone. Um, I've been vlogging every game or if not vlogging it, streaming it. So... I feel like to not stream tomorrow night would just be a bit of a chapter left out of the journey, win or lose. Win or lose, I feel like it would just be a bit of a uh, a bit of a gap in the storyline. So I am going to stream it. I'm going to front up. It could be <laughs> oh, I just keep picturing like us getting flogged again like we <laughs> like we did in round 23. When we were getting flogged in round 23, the amount of Geelong fans that came into the stream and started rinsing me was something something to behold. And I can just start picturing that tomorrow night. We, we go down by a couple of goals. Oh, God. But anyway, I just feel like I've, I've been on the... I've been sharing my, um, my nuffiness for the last couple of years. So I feel like it's probably... I don't know. It's sort of my duty <laughs> to share it. And that's why I will... I will stream tomorrow night. I did do a prediction on the Back Pocket Plugger podcast. I always forget what I say on every different show or <laughs> every different video that I do. I think I tipped us by about 30 points. Deep down, I can see us getting it done. And I'm not saying we will. And I'm. <laughs> it wouldn't, like, trust me, it wouldn't surprise me if the Cats get it done and get it done comprehensively. Like... You can't trust me anymore on that. Like the amount of times I have been glass half full going down to GMHBA, as I said before, and they just belittle us and just break us in half. It's happened a million times. So trust me on this. It would not surprise me if the Cats get it done. But for some reason, I'm optimistic. I am optimistic. Deep down, I think the D's best footy has been so good and it's been real finals type footy it's that surge footy it's that defensive that full ground defense um, it's that manic pressure and I think I think that should be enough to get it done tomorrow night so I can see it being a real arm wrestle but I'm hoping we can sort of have a bit of a gap late in the game I don't know if I can sit through a, a ball burster <laughs> anyway guys that is my prelim final ramble for tomorrow night uh, I guess I may as well do a little bit of a tip for Saturday night I'm gonna tip the power once again I'm not a professional analyst and I don't really know how I really like how the Bulldogs are building it has got a bit of 2016 feel about it but you just feel like the power at home probably get it done so my tips are the D's by Four goals, four or five goals 
in the end after a tough game. And then probably the power by about three goals. So I reckon that'll be I reckon the power game will be closer. Anyway, guys, that is it for my prelim final ramble. I'm probably not gonna get much sleep tonight. And tomorrow's gonna be a very, very long day. But I am excited to stream. I'm excited to bring all of you guys along with the journey. And hopefully the D's can get it done. Come on. <laughs> Come on, D's. I'll see you all very soon. Cheers. <laughs>